What's the best year for the MCU? Some might say 2012 or 2019. 2012! But only one good MCU film came out during those. 2017 and 2018 are very strong contenders, but I think the year with the highest consistent quality has to go to 2014. I bet you're gonna have a really great year. Yeah? 2014 upgraded Captain America to the next level and introduced to the Guardians of the Galaxy. They got my dick message! Both of their respective movies are still held up today as some of the very best MCU movies ever. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? In the case of the Winter Soldier, it turns 10 years old this week. Well, last week if you're a Brit or international like myself, but who's counting? Well, me. The Winter Soldier coming out a decade ago seems insane because it feels like yesterday when I was much younger and had less lower back pain and the promise of Cat 2 felt like an exciting reboot for how the character was depicted and the shakeups in store for the MCU going forward. Captain America the Winter Soldier was a key entry into the MCU for a host of reasons in front of and behind the camera. It was the first teaming of writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely with directors Joe and Anthony Russo. A quartet that would go on to give us the awesome Thanos-led Avengers stories. The most apparent change was obviously the action. Looking back on it, it was a hard three years for a Cap fanboy in his formative days of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because he got his ass kicked a lot. This was heightened in the Avengers because Joss Whedon never cared for a character that was straight laced and lacked his brand of snarkiness. The self insert Stark got all the best bits, whilst Cap got relegated to getting his ass handed to him repeatedly. When it came to the Russos taking over the character in his solo sequel, it's clear the decision was made to amp up his powers. Whilst the MCU Cap's personality skews closer to his 616 comic book counterpart, his abilities are superhuman like his Ultimate Comics variant. I think this was the right decision. He needed some extra juice to stand alongside the rest of the Marvel Trinity and to stand out against the regular Avengers like Black Widow and Hawkeye. We'd already seen a Super Soldier take on a Hulk in 2008, so the original recipe Super Soldier needed to keep up. But really, the main reason is this. It's simply more entertaining to watch Cap yeet people across the screen. <laughs> I think I could ever tire of watching Cap toss his shield full pelt at some hapless Hydra goons. Eight minutes, Cap. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. In universe, it was said that Cap had been learning various martial arts in the modern world during the two-year time gap from Avengers to the Winter Soldier, providing a convenient law reason why he was suddenly far more adept at bringing the pain. Alongside D.O.P. Trent Opalock, the cinematographer responsible for shooting the heyday Neil Blomkamp sci-fi movies, Cap's fighting was better framed and more satisfying to watch. This movie was where the casual fan could finally see what all the fuss was about. Cap owns, and it's a mistake to underestimate him. Of course, none of this would work without the construction of the action in the story. From watching UFC legends GSP go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cap, Not impressed by your performance. Following an awesome boat set action sequence, to seeing Cap outnumbered in a tiny cramped elevator, there's tons of memorable moments here. I know some people thought it was too much, but I personally loved seeing Cap mess up a Quintjet, attacking him head on. This was the best showcase of just how capable he was. In a movie that was mostly practical hand-to-hand -hand combat, it was cool to see a more outlandish sequence, as Cap throws himself onto the jet and systematically destroys its engines. This was Cap versus a freaking dragon, and it was awesome. And who could forget, amongst all this awesome action, 
Cap looked damn good doing it. You gonna wear that? No. If you're gonna fight a war, you gotta wear a uniform. One thing about Cap's design I always think is stupid is the insistence that he has to wear red, white, and blue in sizable quantities. He really doesn't. The shield already has the red, white, and blue and a massive star on it. He's representing the American flag enough, just holding the thing in plain clothes. The stealth suit still screams the Captain America aesthetic with no white or red, just the dark blues and the stars and stripes on the torso and shoulders. I love the Age of Ultron suit and its later endgame variant with the scales, but I feel like on any given day I could actually stick this stealth suit at the very top. It's so simple and streamlined and far less busy than all of his other costumes, and I love that. The dark blue, silver and brown go together so nicely. The fingerless gloves and the shield bandolier were iconic and something that all the subsequent costumes drew from. Unlike a movie like X-Men Dark Phoenix, it made sense to see the heroes in plain clothes for some huge action sequences, given the fact that they were on the run. But the finale stole the show with a slightly updated version of Cap's first Avenger outfit. Not only did it still look fantastic, it was the perfect visual representation of how Cap would do things his own way to fight the Hydra-infested shield. Cap goes from being a stealthy, Solid Snake-esque badass at the start of the movie to announcing his intentions in his classic suit. And he doesn't even tell a single lie here. They shot Nick Fury, and it won't end there. Notice he says Fury was shot, not killed. Cap's biggest power is his ability to lead, to inspire loyalty, and to show people the best parts of themselves. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. This was the movie that firmly established that Cap had the best support squad of all the MCU solo heroes. Where Thor's Warriors 3 vanished and Iron Man's Rhodey and Pepper got given less and less to do, Cap's strength consistently lied in his friends. Black Widow was underutilised in Iron Man 2, but fit perfectly into Cap 2. Out of the three Avengers who never got a solo movie in Phase 2, Widow was served the best because she had a great buddy dynamic going with Rogers and had plenty of awesome action scenes. The contrast of Cap as the truthful warrior next to her deceitful spy worked perfectly in a storyline that saw the organisation we had learnt to trust across Phase 1 crumble to dust. It's a tough way to live. It's a good way not to die though. And then Sam Wilson's The Falcon provided the perfect counterweight to Widow. I'm more of a soldier than a spy. Where Widow made Rogers question his ethics, Falcon provided Cap with a friend who had been through the same trials as him and shared his honest outlook. He also gave him a friend at a time where his oldest one returned in the worst way possible. And look, I know Nick Fury is more of an overarching Avengers character than a Cap family character specifically, but his role in this movie was the best he ever got. He fit perfectly into the Steve Rogers world of super soldiers and super spies. His car chase scene is still the perfect audition for what a Nick Fury movie could be. Ten years later, and all we ended up getting was the subpar secret invasion. The Winter Soldier car chase was better than all of that. From the tension of watching Nick hold off on the countermeasures until the last second... Now! To his exasperated temperament as everything goes wrong. Well, what's not them? Air conditioning is fully operational. Given the way he was never used properly ever again, and in fact all but disappeared for the subsequent event movies, I wonder if they should have killed him off and added some real stakes here. Then again, in my humble opinion, it should have been him and the original six doing the time heist in Endgame. He was the honorary 7th Avenger to that first team, and he hadn't played a decent part in the MCU from 2014 to the release of that movie. That would have been the perfect time to use him. I digress. Speaking of Bucky... <laughs> The comparisons to the Terminator series are obvious with the Winter Soldier, which is something that's always going to rustle my jimmies, because T2 is of course the greatest action film ever made. I know now why you cry, but it's something I can never do.
The Winter Soldier had that awesome motif provided by Henry Jackman and was brought to life with an intense and powerful presence by Sebastian Stan and his notable stunt performers, including James Young, Jason Charles Hill, Greg Reminter, Jimmy N. Roberts, Justin Sunquist, Spencer Mulligan, John Nania, and Nicholas Boss. The best usage of this Marvel Terminator comes in the highway chase. The guy rips off the hero's freaking steering wheel, gives Sitwell a personal tour, and gives a 95 year old man the bus pass he's entitled to. This sequence is the best action scene of the whole movie, and it's because the Winter Soldier feels invincible. Plus, who can forget the single best 1v1 the franchise ever had in the cap face-off? The choreography here was impeccable, and it was a blast to see Cap throw literally everything at this guy who would just not quit. Plus, knife tricks, and that nasty knee. Oh, play that again. Damn! Damn! It's getting damn near past time for you to get with that program, Cap. Don't hold your breath. When the first Avenger came out, I wasn't convinced Captain America would work outside of World War II or without a team to lead. I was intrigued by what a modern day sequel would do. Luckily, the decision to adapt to Nick Fury's story and reveal that S.H.I.E.L.D. had been covertly infiltrated by HYDRA was the perfect way to update the character for the 21st century. Going from the greatest generation to a more morally grey post-Cold War version of the world meant Cap couldn't just punch his way out. And the reveal that S.H.I.E.L.D. was compromised was a game changer for the MCU as it meant the safety net had finally fallen through for the Avengers. The movie utilised Sola so well, and Robert Redford getting to play the secret Hydra leader was also great, even if he had a small role, all things considered. Want some milk? There was a lot of speculation at the time that his face would peel away to reveal Red Skull, which I think could have worked and would have given the movie a strong antagonistic figurehead, but it's a minor gripe. It's funny, in the next Cap movie there will also be a Red Ford, not Robert Redford, Harrison Ford as Red Hulk. I'm sorry, I'll see myself out. In many ways, this movie was the first part of a quadrilogy of stories. Whilst the Avengers and Age of Ultron were obviously integral, and movies like Ragnarok were essential to Thor's Infinity War and Endgame storyline, the Marcus McFeely Russo's movies provided a clear through line for not only Cap, but Tony too. In this first part, Cap realises his place in the modern world, and the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. turns the Avengers into a truly independent organisation. He learns the truth about Stark's parents, and is reunited with Bucky. Civil War then expands on this, and brings his relationship with Tony to a crossroads, when the armoured Avenger realises Rogers is not a perfect saint, and has kept that truth from him. Their broken relationship is the reason why they fail in Infinity War when Thanos finally arrives and it is their ability to repair that relationship in Endgame which sees the Avengers renewed and able to win. You trust me? I do. The Winter Soldier was not only one of the best MCU movies, it set everything in motion from a creative standpoint and a story standpoint. But not only that, it's a rather interesting time capsule for where the MCU was then and where it is now. We are both of us. <laughs> Out of time. It's crazy to think how much of what we came to define as the MCU in 2014 has now changed. That same year as Winter Soldier and Guardians, we got Andrew Garfield's maligned Amazing Spider-Man sequel and the time travel epic X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, those universes and their respective characters are all folded into the MCU as one big multiverse. That would have blown my 2014 mind back in the day. Just seeing Deadpool look at footage from the Winter Soldier in the new trailer is still surreal. And to be honest, it still feels like a fever dream almost three years on that we got to see Garfield and Maguire back on screen. It's easy to forget the post credit scene introduced us to Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch, 
you know, back when post credit scenes were actually an awesome tease of what's to come, that same Scarlet Witch would go on to face a variant of the Xavier scene that same summer. Again, just so surreal. And of course, perhaps the biggest thing, Sam Wilson, the second Captain America, got his humble beginnings here. I do what he does, just slower. I'm not just being a revisionist, I always thought Sam was the perfect choice for Steve's successor. He has his moral center, they're both soldiers, Bucky is great and all, but I've always wanted to see him become his own man outside of Steve's shadow. He just needed to shed the Winter Soldier moniker. He didn't need to become Captain America. It's appropriate then, that Sam got the final line in Captain America The Winter Soldier. When do we start? The completionist in me is sad that Sam's Cap movie that was set for this year missed its mark. It would have been cool to have him debut on the silver screen a full decade after the epic Winter Soldier. Then again, if the rumours are true, it sounds like the movie needs the time. It's a shame that it got pushed back for the anniversary, but I also don't want it to suck, so there's that. I love Captain America The Winter Soldier. Do I wish the MCU would return to its 2014 golden age? Not especially. We're so obsessed with nostalgia culturally, and we seem to want things to go back to their peak all the time, often in vain. Ten years on, it's impossible to recreate the conditions that gave us the MCU movies like The Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy. I hope things like the new Deadpool movie are good, but I also don't expect them to reinvigorate the MCU and give me that feeling again. That time has passed. And that's okay. The MCU might evolve and give us new things to care about, but partly why those Cap and Stark years were so good was because they had an ending. The best way to evoke the feeling of 2014 MCU is to go back and watch it. It was something special and it was a joy to jump back into it for this video. I think I might do the same for the 10 year anniversary of Guardians of the Galaxy now too. To close out, Chris Evans recently had this to say on The Winter Soldier. It's my personal favourite Marvel movie I've been a part of. And it's not just for the movie itself, but the experience. On the first film, I was so nervous. You know what you're stepping into. You know what Marvel's expecting out of it. As a result, you're playing defense. You're playing not to lose. When Winter Soldier came around, we were all kind of playing to win. It was my first film with the Russos. There was a lot to prove to make your mark taking more risks. The character felt more fleshed out. It was a really exciting time and I think they nailed it. So for me, it was one of the more satisfying experiences in my Marvel run. Happy birthday to Captain America, the Winter Soldier. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on the return of another 2014 epic hero, then Godzilla and Kong The New Empire is being reviewed on the next episode of the Full Fat Podcast, which will be dropping on Friday, April 5th, tomorrow if you're watching this video the day it's come out and i'll also be going into the latest episode of x-men 97 you can catch that all in the link below and the pinned comment yo a huge mahoosive thank you to peter vaughan who is my new full fat tier patron as well as the good old reliable dr chike thank you very much for your contributions